That is the question. Drama. So according to Ewing and Simons in 2004, play building is a process that allows students to explore issues from all areas of the curriculum in depth. So in order for it to be play building, students must create their drama and perform them and appreciate not only their own but other people's work. So I think the biggest benefit of play building includes the depth of understanding that you can achieve and the connection to the stimulus when you're creating your own um, or when you're participating in play building. Um, the depth and understanding can really assist in creative writing and um, giving you a, an opinion. So in terms of debating and things like that, you can really have an understanding of where your standpoint is and how you can perhaps portray it. However, because play building is such an in-depth exploration and process, it can be quite lengthy. So the limitation for play building perhaps is that you need to continue over multiple sessions and it becomes a little bit disjointed, particularly if you've got absences and things like that. So you just need to ensure that you keep students engaged and particularly on task. Going over a number of sessions, you want your students to have something of quality to present to the class and to allow some um, analysing at the end and appreciation. Formative assessment in play building is quite a big advantage, I feel, for this technique. So, so while students are play building, it's a good opportunity for you to engage in the technique of hot seating. So as you interview your students, you can assess how deep they are into the role um, in terms of how they respond in character. In addition to that, you can also assess um, the students doing the appreciating at the end. So you can see the meta language they're using, whether they're using the words tension and space and context and all of the elements of drama, which I'll include in the link below as well. Um, so similarly, you can also assess how the people perform. Similarly, you can also assess how the people performing have incorporated those techniques into their play, whether they've used space to convey the right meanings and whether they've introduced some kind of tension and interest into their performance. So for play building, I have awarded them four out of five apples for enjoyment in students and, and three out of five apples for practicality in implementing it in the classroom. I am drama's biggest advocate when it comes to literacy and developing literacy through drama. So if you want your students to understand and connect to any literature, then drama is the way to do it. So when students engage with the text in a meaningful way, their response is going to be equally as meaningful and authentic. When exploring quality literature with drama, students can better explore Freebody and Luke's four roles of the reader. So we have code breaker, text user, text participant and text analyst. So the two higher order thinking, so the text analyst and the text participant, they can really be enriched um, through drama. So students can participate in the activities that are in the literature to gain a better understanding of the character's motives and their feelings and their responses. So they're a participant in the same thing that the text is and it really helps them to draw from a personal uh, experience. In addition to that, we have the text analyst. So when students engage in drama with the text, they can better have an understanding on the decisions why the text was made and why the author made the text the way that they did. I've got a couple of suggestions for you in using drama to develop literacy. So we've got frozen image and tapping in when you want your students to understand the thoughts of characters. I've got living clay and sculpting when you want students to really understand the characterization within a text and to shape the other students to represent that and reflect their um, actions within the text and their feelings and thoughts in terms of certain contexts. Um, we have Reader's Theatre to explore passages uh, of text and of poetry. Um, mind to explore different meanings of verbs and adverbials. So I found that particularly useful when you're using words that students don't quite understand. If you explore it through drama and through mime, they're more likely to remember what it means and to integrate it into their writing. As I've mentioned previously, play building. Play building helps students to develop their opinion on an event or a stimulus. There are so many options. If you want to learn more about drama and the different dramatic techniques and the way that you can incorporate it into your literacy, I've, I've provided a link down below. Um, for drama and literacy, I've given 5 out of 5 apples for enjoyment and 5 out of 5 for practicality. It's definitely something that I would recommend. 
So we have Teaching, Enroll and Mentor the Expert. Mentor the Expert is something that I have been doing for years and years in my dance teaching, but I never knew that it was an actual thing or that there was a name for it. It's my absolute favourite and students love it. They really, of any age, they love being able to teach the teacher. So essentially, by students becoming the expert and you becoming the learner, students develop a little bit of confidence and they put themselves out there and they're more willing to take educational risks. So even if they've said the wrong thing, just roll with it because you don't want to ruin their confidence. That's one of the whole reasons that we're doing Mantle of the Expert. So um, I, perhaps that's a limitation of Mantle of the Expert is that students can bring misconceptions in. So you just need to have a reflection and a debrief at the end and perhaps fix some of those misconceptions. More ideas closer to what you were looking for. For Mental of the Expert, I'm going to give them four out of five for enjoyment, three and a half out of five for practicality. For teaching and role is slightly different. The teacher takes on a role and maintains it for a period of time whilst te teaching the lesson. It's important that you use a prop or something to distinguish between your teacher hat and your teaching and role hat. So if you need to quickly swap into the teacher role, then students understand that you're the teacher, everything's back to normal, we're not playing around. So um, the limitations for teaching and role, I feel like you need to commit fully, otherwise it's not going to work. So if you come into a classroom and you're apprehensive and embarrassed, you're teaching your students that they need to be apprehensive and embarrassed about putting themselves out it's there. It's really just important that you give it your all and you go straight in with it and you have no hesitations. Kids are going to love you for it if you really throw yourself out there and you're honest and they enjoy being in your classroom. If you're coming in apprehensive, embarrassed, nervous, you're really using that hidden curriculum to tell the students, I'm doing something I should be embarrassed about right now and if you're not feeling that then you're wrong. Um, but in terms of a well implemented teacher in role, it can be really helpful to tackle some tricky issues or even just explore um, literature in a more in-depth way. There's plenty of uses for teacher in role if you're willing to give it a go. I definitely think I'm going to try it in the future. You need to heavily research what you're going to do and have a plan for everything but I think it's a really effective technique if you can pull it off. So down below I've got some examples of teaching in role and it was really helpful to read because there's more than one way to do teaching in role and I think these are definitely quite easy to implement. So I'm going to give teaching and role 5 out of 5 for enjoyment and 3 out of 5 for practicality. So today, puppetry in drama. Uh, puppetry in drama isn't all about marionettes. It can be as simple as some fingers or some newspaper and it's a really great technique to use in the classroom. I'm really advocating the use of puppetry. The greatest benefit to teaching and incorporating puppetry into the classroom, I think, is that students have a buffer between themselves and the audience. So when children feel secure and comfortable, then they're more likely to take educational risks and share their ideas and really put themselves out there in their performance. Quote Simons and Ewing from Beyond the Script on page 53. Part of the never-ending appeal of puppetry lies in the fact that the puppet is the focus of the attention, so the puppeteer feels safe. Uh, in addition to emotional benefits, puppetry is both fun and economic economically viable for the classroom. Most fun our, the most fun our class of second year students had was recreating fairy tales and fables using junk puppets. So essentially they're just made out of balloons newspaper and crepe paper. So, so simple but so much fun and really you can engage and it's it's a very enjoyable and it's a very enjoyable experience. The use of puppets also helps to place emphasis on the elements of drama. So we have role, tension, symbol, focus, mood and contrast and this is in the New South Wales K-6 syllabus. The most difficult component, I think, of puppetry is ensuring that students don't get overexcited. You really need to keep the class focused and calm and make sure students direct their focus towards the puppet rather than the person that's operating the puppet next to them. So it's quite difficult. So your students really need to focus their attention on their puppet and really experiment with voice and characterization of their puppet. So I've provided some links down below for incorporating puppets into the classroom. I'm going to give them 5 out of 5 for enjoyment and 4 out of 5 for practicality.